So we're just gonna jump right into this. I had her wash her hair and put some gel in there and there's some heat protectant in there. And then we're just gonna rough dry her hair and I'm gonna curl it later. And it's not that there's anything at all wrong with her waves or that they aren't formal. It's just that her hair is coarse and it's a bit on the stiffer side and I do need it to be a little bit more pliable for the style that I'm doing. And I have discovered over the years of working with her hair that curling it with uh, a hot tool of some sort definitely helps it to become a little bit more pliable for certain styles that we're working with, but I will definitely be doing uh, a video of using her natural wave for uh, a bridal look as well. So you'll be able to see that. But for here, we're just curling it. And this is an iron that I probably picked up at Target when it, just to use at home on her hair. Uh, back when I worked in a salon, I had all of my professional tools at the salon. So this is just what I got to work on her hair at home. And I like the kind of conical shape of it where it creates looser curls. And there's my cat in the background. Anyway, it creates the looser curls up near the scalp and a little bit more of a curl down at the end, which is kind of going to work really well for the style that we're going to be doing. I want her hair to be a little bit smoother at the scalp and I really only want the, the curls to be mostly concentrated at the ends. So here I am sectioning the hair because that is really what's gonna help get control over the hair, especially when you're working with as much hair as she has, because as you can see here, she has a lot of hair. Uh, I typically say that my hair is enough for myself and three other people. She's probably got enough for herself and about five other people. So sectioning these her hair off is extremely important. Otherwise, it's really easy to kind of get lost in the style or, you know, the hair can kind of take control over you versus you taking control over the hair. So I section off the front portions that I'll be doing something with later, and then I'm just going to get these portions of her hair out of the way, which is just up at the top here, so that I can work on what's underneath to start with. Okay, so I am going to create an anchor to pin extra, to pin the hair into. So I'm just going to take this portion in the middle and braid it, and then kind of create a bun and then pin it. So then that way I have, like I said, places to pin the hair to. It also helps to take up some of her extra hair because she has so much hair that I tend to run out of places to pin her hair before I run out of hair to pin to it. So this definitely helps with that. And I think if this is the style we go with on the day of her wedding, that we will probably create a bigger anchor so that I can kind of create more tendrils and less of kind of a thick updo. So anyway, I am just securing this in place and then I'm gonna start taking some of her hair and pinning it to that anchor. And there is kind of not really any sort of scientific rhyme or reason here. This is just me going through and taking a look at what I think looks best. And this strand here, I kind of wrapped it around that anchor a little bit, first to hide the anchor, the anchor, but then also to kind of, again, take up some of that excess length and excess hair. And then now I've moved on to the top and I'm kind of smoothing it over and I'm just going to pin it how I like. So I'm kind of pushing it up a little bit to get some vol volume up there and then pinning it in place. And I continue to do that, continue to pin and hairspray. And one other tip that I would give that I didn't mention in the beginning of the video and I didn't do for this uh, trial is to spray the hair with hairspray or a thermal setting spray prior to curling it just because it helps to um, create curls better and to get them to last longer. But because this is just a trial, I really wasn't worried about how long everything was going to last. So I'm just crossing the hair, kind of crisscrossing it back and forth over those pins, partially to hide the pins, partially to take up some extra length and some extra hair. And I'm then pulling the hair up beneath it and pinning it into place because I do want 
this style to come up a little bit higher on her head. I don't want it to come all the way up to the top of her head, but I also don't want it to be like a really low ponytail. Um, so I'm bringing it up for that. And then some of these curls have separated and gotten a little bit fuzzy. So I'm just reshaping it a little bit with my finger, as you could see there, and then pinning it into place. And you'll notice I kind of work from side to side and I do this because it helps me to maintain the symmetry and balance so that it doesn't wind up being really lopsided when I'm working on it and I just I do that a lot so I go and I grab curls as you can see here and then I pin it into place and then I kind of look at it first and I'll hold it up to a different bunch of different spots and decide if I like it there first beforehand and then afterwards like you just saw I kind of spread the hair out and I let it fall naturally and kind of see how it's looking if I don't like how it's looking when I do that then I absolutely unpin it and then repin it someplace else and I just continue on with this and then now I'm coming to the front and I'm pulling some face framing pieces out and we do have a mirror in front of us. I've attached it to my patio door there so that we could kind of see and we, she could see what it looked like and we determined how much to pull out for that. And then I'm going to do a French braid here, but I'm only gonna be feeding hair into it from this front side and not so much from the other side just because I wanted that look around the front of her face, but then I wanted to the braid itself to really stand out against that smoother hair that we've got behind it. So I'm just going to continue on with this braid and do that. And also you might see some clutter in the background. Apologize for the clutter, but my ADHD brain, when we start trying to clean up clutter, I get distracted 20 million times after picking up just one thing and it leads to other things and I start many projects and before you know it I'm in a different part of the house doing something completely unrelated to cleaning up clutter and I have now created a ton more clutter right behind me because I've started a bunch of projects that I never finished and completely forgot about so cleaning up clutter is definitely a problem for me so thanks ADHD anyway um, now that I have gotten to the point where I'm no longer pulling hair into it, I'm just going to finish it off like a normal braid and then I will secure that in place. And yes, that is a box of mac and cheese behind my daughter's head. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's my son's and I have no idea why it's sitting there. Anyway, I am going to finish up this braid here and then I will secure it in place and I'm going to kind of loosen it up here a little bit before securing it and I believe I loosen it up even more a little bit later as well but the reason I'm doing this is because I want something that's a little bit softer a little bit fluffier and um, kind of stands out a little bit more I didn't really want a really tight braid so now I'm just securing that braid in place and then I'm going to take the ends and kind of smooth them out and reshape them a little bit and then I will also pin that down and turn that end into part of the style versus hiding it because I think I actually just pin it right to the top of the style there. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and it's literally going to be the same exact process as before. So we're going to talk a little bit about my cameraman because this is the first time I've done a video where I've actually had a cameraman and uh, he got a lot better throughout the whole thing. He started off a little awkward and uh, really got into it. And so he basically had to keep moving around me because I was constantly moving and I wasn't going to watch what I was doing because I have work to do. So he basically had to work around me and my cameraman is my son-in-law. Uh, they are actually already married even though they are having their wedding later this year. It will actually be their vow renewal on their first anniversary. And I did mention this in another video last year. They got married in a very quiet, small ceremony on November 2nd of last year due to the fact that his mother uh, who had been battling lung cancer for three years, found out 
in October that there was nothing left they could do for her. We didn't know how long she'd have, and she didn't want to find out, but we definitely, it was... It wasn't looking like she was going to make it until their actual wedding. So they decided to move it up and they had a very small ceremony where it was just his parents and um, me and my ex-husband and then uh, our sons, so my daughter's brothers. And it was just family and just a really quick small ceremony in a park here in Colorado. They don't need an officiant, so they basically officiated their own wedding. And then we went to dinner afterwards and just kept it small and simple. So we're continuing on with the plans that they had already started prior to this happening um, for this coming November because they had already started planning it. And then also because there are a lot of people that they wanted to be a part of it and be there and help them celebrate and people coming in from out of town that weren't able to be there for their actual wedding. So anyway, that is the story there. And she did unfortunately pass away one week after the wedding and it is going to be a bittersweet event coming up this November because obviously it'll be a joyous occasion, but then uh, a little bit of a shadow cast because she is not there to see it, but we are all very thankful and happy that she did get to see them get married. And I know she was quite happy to have been able to see that prior to passing away. So that is the situation there. Um, like I said, I mentioned it in a previous video. I just can't remember which video, but for those of you who've been here, you probably already saw it. And for those of you who are new, welcome to my channel and that is why my daughter technically is going to be having two weddings. So here I am, I'm just touching things up in her hair. I'm recurling things that kind of loosened up or I just don't like the look of. And this is definitely something that I did when I was still working behind the chair. I would do this on clients all the time. I probably spend more time on the perfecting part of it rather than the actual putting the hair up. And yeah, I definitely do a lot of messing around and fussing with it. And here I'm just grabbing nothing but hairpins at this point. I had been using bobby pins to secure everything. Bobby pins work really well for securing. Hairpins are really good for this kind of just tacking everything down in place and holding it where you want it. Uh, but because of the way that they are shaped, they are not really good for holding a lot of weight or being super secure. So I find them to work a lot better when I'm fussing around and just kind of moving things into place and and holding like just very small amounts of weight and whatnot. So I'm going to show you how I keep hairpins from sliding out and I'll actually show you that here in a minute more closely, but I do bend the one side of the bobby pin so that it doesn't just slide right back out because you'll see with a hairpin that it, yeah, there we go. I'm just bending the one side down so that you can easily slide it in, but it doesn't easily slide out because that bent part will hook into the hair so that it doesn't pop back out. If you don't do that, they do tend to slide out pretty easily just because of the way that they're shaped. And so now I'm doing some touch-ups at the front of her hair and you'll see some kind of steam coming off of there that, or I don't really wanna call that smoke, but generally that's the product in the hair that you're seeing kind of reacting with the heat or burning off a little bit. It is not damaging the hair at all. It's not scorching the hair. If you scorch the hair, you will definitely smell it, but that's not what's happening here. It's just the product that's actually on the hair. So as I said, I'm kind of tacking everything in a place. I'm putting hairpins there because I wanna hold the braid where I want it. And then I'm pulling back some of the face framing pieces because we decided we didn't want it as solid or as much in front. And now I'm just using my working spray and putting everything to place and then spraying it. And then here is the finished look and we're getting a 360. And then the picture on the side here is the inspiration. So I kind of think I almost nailed it or got pretty darn close. Yeah, she's making a face at me. But anyway, here is the finished look. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.